Hi, do you know how red color line or dot formed in a pregnancy or HIV test? Stay tuned to know about the technique behind this indicator. Today's video, I am going to discuss about conjugate pad and its process and machine used in these processes. Schematic diagram of lateral flow assay as shown in the figure. Here we will only focus about the conjugate pad and its process. To know more about lateral flow assay and coated membrane, please click the link below in the description box. Conjugate pad. It is one of the crucial and delicate component of the lateral flow or rapid test. Conjugate provides the medium for the conjugate to stable in a dried form. Material used for the conjugate pads are polyester or PTR. Materials are supplied in the form of roll, sheet or strip. Type of conjugate pad. Based on the wicking time and physical parameter, conjugate pads are classified. Wicking time is the time taken to move the sample to the definite distance by capillary action. It is usually measured in second. Different conjugate pads supplied based on the wicking time, that is seconds per 4 cm are 25 seconds and 30 seconds etc. Based on the physical parameter, 5 mm, 7 mm, 10 mm conjugate pads are available. Three things to be noted while selecting the conjugate pad. Number one, conjugate pad should be stable after drying. Number two, should release 100% and rapidly. Number three, allow the rapid sample penetration to all part of the pad. Number 4. It should not bind or interfere with the sample. Number 5. Materials should be a homogeneous. Key things to be remembered during the conjugate pad storage and its use. Number 1. Conjugate pad should be kept away from the moisture or heat. Number 2. Materials should be stored preferably in the clean room. It should be free from the dust and other particulates. Number 3. Temperature of the room should be 15 to 25 degree centigrade. It's a general condition for storing. For specific pad requirement, follow the instruction provided by the manufacturer. Conjugate particle used in the lateral flow assay. First one, colloidal cold conjugate. Typical size ranges from 20 to 80 nanometer. Intense color provides the good intensity. Proteins are bind passively. Second one is latex microsphere. Typical size ranges from 200 to 400 nanometer. Variety of the color and the fluorescent dyes are available. Protein can be covalently attached. Third one is a magnetic particle. Size ranges is 5300 nanometer. Magnetite that is Fe3O4 particle mixed with the polymer. Protein can be covalently attached. Here we will concentrate only on the colloidal gold conjugate. Let's move on to the process. First one is colloidal gold preparation. Second one is a gold conjugation. Third one is blocking. Fourth one is dispensing drain between. Fifth one is a drying. Colloidal gold preparation. It's a general method. Material used are the gold chloride, trisodium citrate, and ultra pure water. Equipment required are container or vessel, tool for handling hot container, magnetic stirrer with the heater, magnetic bead, stopwatch, or the timer. Processes are number one preparation of 1% gold chloride and 1% trisodium citrate stock. Trisodium citrate solution prepared freshly. Second one heat the ultra pure water in a glass vessel and add 1 ml of gold chloride from stock in 100 ml of ultra pure water. Third, when start boiling, add 1% citrate from stock into the above solution and start timer. Number 4, after definite interval, add 1% gold chloride solution. Number 5, cool the solution after definite interval. Different colloid gold nanoparticle 20 nanometer, 40 nanometer, 60 nanometer size are synthesized by changing the gold chloride and citrate concentration ratio and also time interval of the process. Gold conjugation. Materials required are gold collides, antigen or antibody, buffer and blocking buffer. Equipment used are centrifuge machine, centrifuge tool, pipette or suction pump system to remove the supernatant, vessel, magnetic stirrer or magnetic bead and timer or the stopwatch. Processes are first one preparation of coating buffer or blocking buffer. Second one preparation of solution A. Add known concentration of antigen or antibody to the buffer of 100 ml. Third preparation of solution B. 
separately in a container adjust the gold colloid pH by 0.2 molar potassium carbonate solution. Fourth, slowly mix the solution A and B for 30 minutes. Five, block above mixture with the blocking buffer and mix for 30 minutes. Six, after that centrifuge at definite RPM for 30 minutes. Seventh, collect the pallet and discard the supernatant. Next, carefully dissolve the pellet in the borate buffer. Check the optical density OD in the spectrophotometer. Adjust the OD with the gold dilution buffer. Here I am providing typical formulation of gold conjugate recipe. First one, raw gold collide solution preparation. A. 1% gold chloride. Dissolve 1 gram of tetrachloroauric acid that is HAUCl4 in exact 100 ml of ultra pure water in a dark room as gold chloride is a light sensitive. Store this solution at 4 degrees centigrade covered with the opaque material. B. 1% trisodium citrate. Dissolve 1 gram of trisodium citrate in 100 ml of ultra pure water filter through 0.45 micron filter. This solution made freshly. C. Add 1 ml of 1% gold chloride stock solution to a flask containing 100 ml of ultra pure water heat to boil d once heat boiling vigorously add 2 ml of 1% trisodium citrate stock solution this must be added extremely rapidly in a single dispense e stir and continue to boil with the 10 minute reflux f cool in a water bath for 20 to 30 minutes g scan the gold and determine the lambda max and absorbance in the spectrophotometer Lambda max should be 521 to 524 with the absorbance 1.1 plus or minus 2. Preparation of antigen or antibody solution. First one, prepare a 1 mg per ml solution of antigen or antibody in a 2 millimolar borate buffer pH 9.0 or in 10 millimolar phosphate buffer pH 7.4 depending on the pi value of the protein. Second one, dialyze the antigen or antibody into appropriate buffer. Third, Determine the protein concentration at 280 nanometer. Fourth, adjust the pH of the gold solution 8 to 9 using 0.2 molar potassium carbonate and 0.1 norm HCl. Then, how to determine the coating concentration for gold conjugation? Prepare the solution in a test tube as given below. Take 11 test tube capacity of 2 ml or more. Add buffer and antigen or antibody given as in the table. Mix. Then add colloidal gold to each tube. Mix and allow to stand for 2 minutes. And then add saline and vertex. Wait 5 minutes and using lambda max determined in the preparation of gold above, determine the OD of the each solution and generate a curve OD versus antibody. The optimal concentration of antigen or antibody to use to stabilize the gold is at the point where the curve shows no apparent change in the OD. Conjugation Add quantity of antigen or antibody greater than or equal to the required stabilizing amount per ml of a gold to be conjugated. Mix for minimum 30 minutes at room temperature. Add sufficient volume of 0.45 filtered blocking buffer to yield a final 1% BSA or 0.02% casein concentration. Mix slowly for 30 minutes. Centrifuge the gold solution at 16,000 G at 4 degrees centigrade with no break for 30 minutes. Carefully aspirate of the supernatant. Desuspend the pellet in a storage buffer. The volume of the storage buffer will determine the final OD of the conjugate. Liquid conjugate should be stable for at least 3 months at 2 to 8 degrees centigrade. Final gold conjugate preparation before dispensing. First one, if the conjugate pad blocked with the blocking buffer, calculated optical density OD, gold conjugate solution is adjusted and sprayed on to the conjugate pad. Second, if the conjugate pad is not blocked with the blocking buffer, gold dilution to be prepared and according to the required OD, dilution is done with the dilution buffer and dipping or spraying is done. Composition of gold dilution buffer First one buffer For example 0.1 molar trisphosphate or borate Number 2 sucrose 10% Trellose 10% And last fourth one surfactant or detergent Such as a 0.5% win 20 or 0.1% triton x100 This is for the final concentration Gold conjugate pad blocking Preparation of gold conjugate pad blocking buffer General recipe buffer blocker that is BSA or casein or surfactant or detergent and polymer. Typical example of conjugate flat blocking buffers are borate buffer pH 8.2, BSA 3%, Triton X100 
PVP40 1%. Gold conjugate pad blocking. Conjugate blocking done usually dipping or spraying or dispensing in automated system. This is an additional process nowadays the this process is skipped and blocking and gold dispensing done simultaneously. Conjugate dispensing, spraying or stripping method or second one is a dipping method. Spraying or stripping, conjugate sprayed onto the pad by the spraying or stripping machine. Here the quantity or the concentration of the conjugate can be fixed or adjusted before spraying. Good release property as the conjugate applied only to the surface. Rapid drying due to the low sample volume and low dead volume of the conjugate solution. Dipping. Absorb and saturate the conjugate pad and thereby increase in the signal. It's a manual. Exact concentration at any point it's difficult to calculate as the principle of the process based on the absorption of the conjugate. Dead volume will be more. This process is fast and does not require any machine and hence less expensive. Other dispensing methods are pipetting. This method is only for R&D or QC sample testing. This is not viable for production. 5. Drying. Conjugate drying is a critical factor. Conjugate drying is done by 1. Dehumidifier DHR method. Sample is kept in a DHR room to dry. Second, forced air convention. Forced air convention is more controllable and process friendly method but may not dry efficiently. Third, lyophilization or freeze drying. Drying done by the lyophilization are more stable compared to the other method. Lyophilization or freeze drying does not change the integrity or property of the component. Samples are loosely bound to the pad after drying, so need extra care when handling the lyophilized conjugate pad. Desiccation Desiccation method is time consuming and hence not suitable for the production. Lastly, the machine used in the conjugate pad processing. First one is spectrophotometer. Spectrophotometer is used to scan the gold wavelength and determine the absorbance of the protein and gold conjugate. Second, centrifuge machine. Centrifuge machine used to centrifuge the gold conjugate in order to collect the conjugated pellet. Third, spraying or stripping machine. Spraying or stripping machine used to dispense the gold conjugate onto the conjugate pad. Fourth one is a DHR or lyophilizer. DHR or lyophilizer are used for the drying the conjugate pad. Thank you for watching. Hope this video is useful for you. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe for upcoming videos.